Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to another episode of, uh, What Happened to Your Face? This is a series in which I wear a look out for the night, and I come home, and I tell you what happened. So, I'm gonna... so this look I uh, wore out to karaoke again at Good Friends in New Orleans. Good Friends is a bar in the French Quarter. It is where I host karaoke every Tuesdays. But always check my Instagram to see when I'm if I'm gonna be there because I'm going tour a lot, and so I might not be there if you're. Around. Just always check my Instagram, that's how you know where I'm gonna be. I filmed two videos with this look before I left the house, which was, I guess, about seven hours ago. I think it's around 12.45 right now in the morning. I filmed my full review of this, the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Contour Palette Volume 2. Please check that out. And you know, I gotta say, as with most Lunatic powders, I think it held up pretty well. Like, you can really see, like, I used a really dark contour. Not a lot of it, but a very little bit of it. But my face shape is still there. I think it's actually a little more defined than the looks that I've been doing where I just use a little bit of the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Volume 1. Of course, this is a much darker palette. It's a lot more pigmented. It's made for people with deeper skin tones. And like I say in that video, it's great if you're doing a kind of more dramatic drag look. But I don't want to talk too much about that because I have a whole video that talks about like applying it, I guess, just to say it worked. It was good. Lasted. Lovely. Uh, let's go down, I guess, as per usual. I got my wig. <laughs> I haven't worn her for a while. I, I miss her. She's really good. I cut some of the lace off the top. In, in past videos, you can see that like, I've got like a half inch of lace up there. Girl. I just responded to a comment. Someone was like, I feel so bad saying this, but your hair is really bad. And I wrote, I responded to her and I was like, there's a really great way to not feel bad saying something. Just don't say it. If you don't think I know my hair is shitty, I don't know who you think I am. Like, I know it's shitty. That's the whole point. It's like crappy hair. I don't care. Anyway, so here's me and my crappy hair. <laughs> Moving down, let's just talk about eyes first. This is a thing, like, I'm, I'm curious to see if this happens to any of you. I haven't had this happen to me for a while, but I guess I haven't really worn extra big lashes. They're not really extra big, but they're just, like, very pointy. It's like these lashes that I got at Patricia Field before they closed back in New York City. Very spiky. What happened is, you can see in this, my crease up here, it, like, that's like a lash... A lash mark? It's like sliced it a little bit, so my crease is kind of messed up. For the eyes, I did kind of my same old, same old. I used my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Milk as a base. Then I did uh, my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette. I used the white from the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Contour Volume 1, this white shade here, to set this, this cream white and use it as a base. And then I actually used the shades Aber Zombie and Ditch, which is by Lunatic Cosmetic Labs, this beautiful beautiful blue shade. And then this shade, Wiser, from the Coffee Break with Danny Itzy collaboration. I topped it off with that on the inner corner. And then I topped it off further with this Stila Magnificent Metals Liquid Glitter in the shade Smoky Storm. So that's what's on my inner corner right now. All the shadows, the matte shadows, held up pretty well, I think. And honestly, this glitter also held up really well. I haven't done a What Happened to Your Face, I think, where I talk about this shade, Diamond Dust. So if you don't know, I got sent all of the, the like, kind of core shades, not the duochromes from, that are exclusive to Sephora, but all, I think there's eight of them, shades from Stila, the Magnificent Metals, from a subscriber of mine. She actually purchased them and sent them to me. So. Thank you very much. Again, Dee, you're such a sweetheart. Anyway, but I've been going through these and really testing them out because I wanted to give a very good kind of assessment of them. And here's what I've come up with so far. So I put little stickers on them depending on how they go, like when I wear them. I think I've heavily tested four shades right now. So the shade Gold Goddess, which I've worn a bunch, gets this little happy mola mola because it's fabulous, it's amazing. Long wearing, opaque, beautiful. This shade, Diamond Dust, I actually wear this a lot because it's kind of sheer and it just gives a little glitter, but every time I wear it, I'm disappointed by it. it so it has a little cloudy rain cloud on it. It just doesn't last very long. It just like transfers, it's very neutral because it doesn't really have, it's just like kind of silver and holographic glitter. It doesn't have any colored base, so it's, 
a good kind of neutral shade. It still gets a cloud because meh. And then this other shade, Kitten Karma. I thought I would love this shade. I've never had Kitten Anything by Stila, but I've always been like, oh, that's the perfect shade for me. It's like a little coral, like kind of nudie coral. This sucks. This was like really bad. It not only didn't show up very opaque for me, but the glitter really didn't pop. It just kind of looked like a metallic meh and then it didn't last. So Kitten Karma, I mean, the shade is beautiful, but it also gets a little cloud. This shade that I'm wearing right now is Smoky Storm, and I didn't think I was gonna like this. I haven't worn this yet because I was like, oh, that's not really right for me, but I gotta say, it looks like the undertones are like a little yellow and like nude in here, but on the eye, it really comes off as just this like kind of beautiful, like sparkly, neutral, goldy, silver glitter. I don't know to describe it but I think it complemented this kind of warm eye that I did with this pop of blue and I just basically placed it on top of the shades Abra Zombie and Ditch and then Wiser from the Itzy Coffee Break with Danny collaboration I just basically layered it on just very lightly and I gotta say the color base has worn so it doesn't seem like when I left the house as you can see I'll insert a picture of it this was seven hours ago it, you can see that it's a little more like warm, like a more yellowy orangey tone, but now it just kind of looks like silver glitter. But I gotta say, the glitter is still there. So I'm gonna give this a Mola Mola sticker. I've got these little stickers. I love Mola Molas. Mola Molas, if you don't know, are Pacific Ocean sunfish. They're fabulous, adorable, very fascinating, ancient fish. They're very beautiful. I want to be able to see in my storage like very quickly if they're if it was a, if it's a good shader. Or not. There we go. We got an orange mola mola for you. So boom. So as of now, the verdict for the seal of magnificent metals, glitter and glow liquid eyeshadows. The duds for me, kitten karma, diamond dust. Although I will probably still use diamond dust just because it's the most versatile of them all, I guess. The wins as of yet are gold goddess and smoky storm. So I've actually had a little bit more experience with these products since I filmed this video, and I have some more wins and duds. The wins are Molten Midnight, Gold Goddess, Bronze Bell, Smoky Storm, and the duds are Diamond Dust, Kitten Karma, and Rose Gold Retro. Molten Midnight is a beautiful sheer black based silver shimmer, Bronze Bell's gorgeous bronze all the way through, bronze glitter, bronze base, and Rose Gold Retro just is similar to Kitten Karma in terms of the kind of lack of lasting power and pigmentation. So that's the update about those. Okay, moving down the face, uh, well the cheeks, I love this blush. I use, uh, you can't even see it probably, but I use one of the shades. Yeah, I think it's Deep Rose, it's this kind of deep purpley shade from the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Volume 2. Again, these are crazy, crazy pigmented. They're much more pigmented than the Volume 1, you know, and it's, it's still there. I really didn't apply very much of it. I just wanted a very kind of light glow. And these lights do make blush kind of wash out a little bit, I gotta say. Anyway, highlight I used, where is it? I just had it, didn't I just have it? The Too Faced Love Light Prismatic Highlighter in the shade Blinded by the Light. I don't know why I chose this tone. I thought it would like actually match and bring out some of the smoky storm, that kind of warmish, uh, like neutral highlight. Thought it was fine. This is a kind of, I think I talked about, I might have talked about this before. It's a very natural looking highlight, but it can be built up. But it's kind of like that baked gelée formula that is my favorite highlighter of the moment. It's been a, a moment, it's actually been a while, is the Makeup Forever Pro Light Fusion Highlighter in the shade 1 that fabulous, beautiful jelly formula, which I really like. And so this is that same type of formula. So I'm, I'm a fan of these actually. And there's no glitter in them, which is surprising for Too Faced. You'd think they would just pack as much crazy glitter into whatever they can, but there's no glitter in this and I like it. Lips, really quick. I also talked about this in my Lunatic Cosmetic Labs. Contour Palette Volume 2 video, but I just want to show you the combo, uh, like kind of once and for all. It's ColourPop Lippy Pencil in the shade Brills, which I don't know if they make this anymore. I feel like I've looked on their website to try to find this again. It's like the perfect light purple, like a lavender. I don't, it's, it's more yellowy than a lavender though. Lavender to me, I think of like cool. I don't know, this is less blue. It's like a little bit warmer. Anyway, but I love this. Brills, it's Brills, it's brilliant. Then I topped it with RPG, this fabulous shade by Lunatic Cosmetic Labs and their new lipstick formula. I just love it. And then I did like my little kind of like gloss highlight with Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics, Lip Tart, and Lovecraft. This is of course in the old packaging, but it's the same formula. I will say that this 
I like I like these. This is a in their metallic formula. It's actually just like got silver glitter in it, which I honestly didn't expect. I thought like in the two I guess I've worn this a bunch before, but I forgot that it has like actual particles of glitter. Not that you can feel, like they're not big enough that you can feel. But if you look closely at my lips, like as it's worn down, I did reapply once. I reapplied the lipstick and the OCC lip tar on top. As it's worn down, the glitter particles kind of become more prominent, which is, which makes sense because when I uh, tried out some OCC lip tars in store the last time I was there, I actually ended up purchasing Hollywood, which is like my favorite like ride or die lip topper. It's like amazing. It's a kind of peachy pink, lovely. The sales associate showed me that if you want to bring out the metallic in an OCC metallic lip tar, just take a thin tissue and like gently blot, basically taking off a layer so the glitter becomes more exposed. You know, not surprisingly, they wear down to that. So if you want to just jump to that result, do the little light blotting technique. You can't use a paper towel. It's got to be something really light, like a thin tissue blot, and it will kind of like absorb like blotting paper kind of the top layer and you'll have a little bit more metallic finish or just wear it and let it wear and it will become a little more glittery as it wears down interesting right i didn't talk about foundation because in my i think my kind of master class get ready with me my like hour and a half epic get ready with me i asked y'all if you wanted to see a comparison between the Krylon TV paint stick foundations, which I love. They're kind of a drag staple, super full coverage, affordable. It's like an ounce for $24. Really, really great. If you want to see a comparison between these like, you know, theatrical makeup stick foundations with some of the more commercially available high-end luxury Sephora stick foundations and so many of you were like, yes. And I asked you which ones compare. I got a lot of requests for the hourglass for the Lancome Taint Idole stick foundation. But the most requested, I think, was the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick foundation. This is the one that I was most interested in just because I know people that have used Makeup Forever products for theatrical use. Like, this is the one that I've seen people use in a theatrical context, and frankly, what I'm doing is a theatrical context. It's very heavy, it's changing the shape of my face, and it's made for, like, you know, impact, in a dark bar or whatever like so i want like something that like is more dramatic i don't want something that looks like natural or whatever i would want the one that can be more theatrical and i just think the makeup for everyone was kind of the closest to that of all the ones that were suggested anyway so i decided to just get one to try to do like comparison my shade in krylon tv paint stick is the shade ton chi this is a really tricky shade to find i actually just ordered a couple more of these from the krylon website one of my amazing subscribers casey looked into krylon because i couldn't find my shade ton chi anywhere it was like impossible to find and she said she called them and they said that if you order whatever shade and say you want ton chi they will send it to you because they have it in stock it's just not available on the website for some reason who knows i am like almost out of this guy look how little is left <gasps> i don't even know if i have a full face of ton chi left but anyway long story short the shade that i got that i thought was a dupe for it i actually brought this makeup stick to a Sephora and swatched and compared so I could find a shade match. The closest one I found was R330. Makeup Forever's Ultra HD Stick Foundations I think are really great because they have a red undertone line. They don't just have warm and neutral. They have red, which is essentially like a cooler undertone for foundation. And that's what I, I like to use because I'm very pink naturally. And so a lot of foundations look a little yellow on me. But this R330 I think is a perfect, is the closest shade match of any foundation that I found at Sephora for the Krylon TV Paint Stick in the shade Tonchi. I've used this maybe three or four times now. And I, I I feel like I can just talk about, I can compare these two right now, right here, right now. I don't need to make a separate video for it. I can do it right now. This is about half as much product as this. I believe this is point, oh, it says 0.44 ounces. This is an ounce, 0.44 ounces. So less than half. It is twice the price. So that means that it is four times as expensive. You're getting half as much product and it's twice as expensive, which means that it's four times as expensive basically as this. The coverage of this, I would say it's full coverage, definitely full coverage. Is it as full coverage as this? No. 
This, I can use one layer for my entire face and have this result, which is my full kind of drag, love it, makeup. This, I actually gotta go over it again. I gotta put a layer down, blend it out, add another layer to really get this full coverage. The huge pros about this are blending it way faster than this. It's just smoother, it's silkier, it's a slightly thinner formula, it feels, and so it blends out so incredibly fast. This, I feel like I really have to work a little bit more to blend it, and then it really doesn't smooth out until I like kind of set it. But this, a much smoother finish, I gotta say, with less blending. So even though I have to do another layer, the time that I save on blending, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of comparable, I would say, you know. Also with this, the wear, you know, I don't know. I feel like the wear might be a little better. Like, I don't think it, every time I've worn this, I've just noticed that my skin has looked this smooth for this long. I don't know. I, I, you, I really have, I have to do like a controlled experiment. So maybe, okay, so maybe I take it back. Maybe this isn't the full definitive definitive, definitive review of these two products. But actually maybe I will just get some other stick foundations that you guys have suggested and try them out and then make a video that's actually multiple types of stick foundations that I could review in comparison to this Krylon. But right now I can safely say that like, I've been really enjoying using this. I have, you know, and I, I think it's, I think it's just like a nicer finish a little bit than this. Is the finish four times as nice as this? No. In my mind, can I justify spending four times as much money? I don't know if I could. Like, I, and I, honestly, like, I think I'll just see how long this lasts. Because I think I'm using more of this than this. These last me forever. Ugh because I have to do two layers. Like, I don't know, I feel like this might, so then it's not only four times as expensive, it's maybe even more because I'm using more of the product to get the same coverage, but the finish ultimately is nicer. Anyway, let me know if you use the Makeup Forever HD foundation, if you have any thoughts about that, if you find that you go through it more than other foundations that you've used because you have to layer it, or if, you know, one layer is enough coverage for you. It might be for you, so, you know, this might actually be worthwhile for you, but it is expensive. It's like $48 or $46. This is life. Oh, you know what else I used which might have helped? I finally ran out of my Scandinavia oil control setting spray, but I used the NYX Matte setting spray, matte finish setting spray. I love this stuff. I think this is such an underrated setting spray. It's really like, when I don't do blue marble, which is really more like, kind of like, long wear hairspray for your face. If I want something more, I don't want to stay natural because blue marble doesn't make your face look unnatural in any way. Like, I don't know why. It just feels unnatural. It feels like hairspray on your face. When I don't want that and I want something lighter, I will use this. This is like kind of my default setting spray, period. I think it's one of the best setting sprays out there. NYX Matte Finish setting spray. I don't hear enough people talk about this, but I think it's great. I think this honestly rivals the Scandinavia. Honestly, I should do a rematch of Scandinavia versus Blue Marble versus this, because I think this is pretty great. Anyway, so well, let me know if you want to see a rematch of the setting spray. Oh my god. Yeah, um, that's what happened to my face. My voice is a little sore again. I do karaoke four hours. I'm hosting, and then I sing a lot too. I perform, and I go hard with karaoke. So that's why my voice is all right now. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, give this video a thumbs up if you like my What Happened to Your Face series, if you want to see more of these. If you want to support me and make these videos possible, please, please consider becoming a patron of mine on Patreon and making a per video donation to me. I don't know if, I didn't know if I wanted to bring this up, but I might as well talk about it. The whole YouTube monetization thing, uh, it never caught up to me until recently for some reason, the whole like demonetizing videos for ads, which, you know, I support, I get it. Like if you're an advertiser, you know, I think you should be able to choose how you advertise. That's just all to say, I'm very, very grateful for all of you that support me on Patreon, and thank you so much for being there. And if you are interested in my videos continuing, the best way to make sure that happens is to support me on Patreon. Check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and thanks so much for watching. I'm Kimberly Clark, bye. Oh. <coughs> I'm Kimberly Clark, oh my god. Uh... Let's see if I can do a vocal fry, bye. I'm Kimberly Clark, bye.